Hi everyone and welcome to my next video tutorial which is going to be focused on integrating React Pi within our Django applications. So basically it's React but in a Python format. So let's go on ahead and learn how we can integrate this. Now the first thing that you need to ensure that you have set up is a simple Django project that you want to apply this to. That's going to save you lots of time. And of course, as you can see, I've got one very basic application up and running. So make sure you've got that in place. Now I will be sure to reference this documentation in the description below, so you can head on straight to this link. Right, so we want to say get started. Okay, and what I'm going to do to make it a lot more pleasant, is I'm going to zoom in. Right, so assuming you have a Django project that you want to apply this to, let's get started with the steps. Now the first thing we need to do is to install React Py Django from the Python package manager. So we can go ahead and copy the following. And you want to ensure that you're within your virtual environment. You want to say pip install React Py Django. So this is going to install a list of sub packages as well, along with the main application of React Py Django. So let's just give it some time to go ahead and install everything. It should be relatively quick. And then we can add React Py Django to our list of installed apps. Right, so now that it has been installed, we can go on ahead and add in React Py Django to our in list of installed apps in our settings.py file. So we can copy that. And then you want to navigate to the application you're working with. So my project's called Elevate. I'm going to go to my settings.py file. I'm going to remove that comment. And you want to scroll down to installed apps. And I'd recommend that you put it on the top here. Just like so. So make sure you add that in. Right. Then we need to enable ASGI and Django channels. So a prerequisite of utilizing React Py Django is that you have Django ASGI and Django channels web sockets in place. And this is going to ensure that the whole process is a lot smoothly when we're working with our React components and that we can get those web sockets in place and connected. So first of all, you want to install channels and you also want to ensure that you add in Daphne accordingly as well. So what we can do is go ahead and say pip install. And then all that you want to do is you can just go ahead and copy channels with Daphne in square brackets. And you can press enter. Okay, so there are quite a lot of sub packages here that are going to be installed. So we just need to be a bit patient here. And once it's been all installed, we'll configure that and then we can continue with the process. Right, so we've got that also installed on our environment. Now we can add Daphne to our list of installed apps. So let's go ahead and copy that. And you just want to put that below React Py underscore Django. Now, something I want to mention that's very important is make sure that Daphne is right here underneath React Py Django and at the top of your list of installed apps. And the most important part here is that it's at least on the minimum higher than static files because Daphne is going to have a set of policies and permissions with how it works in its workflow that's going to contradict static files. It needs to be built on top of it. Okay. Next, we need to set our ASGI application variable. We can copy the following and go to our settings.py file. And the only thing you want to do is you want to replace the example project here with the name of your actual Django project that you're working with. So like I mentioned before, mine is called Elevate. Okay, so it's technically the directory where your settings.py file is, generally speaking. So we can go ahead and remove that and add that in as follows. Great, so well done. You successfully enabled ASGI and Django channels. Next, in our main urls.py file, we want to go ahead and add in the React Py HTTP pass. So we can go to our directory here, and here's my urls.py file where my settings.py file is. We can open that. 
And what you want to do is you want to ensure that you have the include function. As you can see, I have that has been imported from Django URLs. So this is where you'll see the, the Django admin URL for Clarity. And then, then you can just go ahead and copy that and paste it in. There you have it. Right. Next, we need to configure our ASGI.py file. So this is going to allow us to register ReactPy's WebSocket using the ReactPy WebSocket route in the ASG.py file. Right, so this section here, we already have in our ASG.py file. So if we were to head on there and click on ASGI.py. So all the files that we're using are in the same directory as you can see here. And we want to move that. And the first three lines, like I mentioned, will be untouched. So if I were to zoom out, we're not going to do anything with that. So that's the default. Now, what we're going to want to do is add everything else instead. So you can just remove this line and go ahead and add in the following. Okay, so simply put, as we can see with the comment there, we just want to ensure that we are able to fetch the ASGI application before we import any dependencies. And of course, that's going to pertain to what we have set here accordingly with our application pass. Right. Great. Next, we want to run our database migrations. So before we do that, I just want to close these files and let's just make it a bit cleaner. We can go here and you can just copy that and say Python manage.py migrate. So this will make all the migrations that are based on that React um, Pi app that we went ahead and set up, as you can see. So it's going to have a few parts here that pertain to components, to component parameters, altering component sessions, etc. So you want to make sure that you have that set up. Now, don't worry about this message that says React Pi did not find any components. The reason why it's showing this is because we haven't set up any components as of yet. So do keep that in mind. Then we can check our migration. This is an optional command, but it's just to verify if React Pi will set up correctly. So you can just say Python manage.py check. Okay, as we can see, it's currently debug mode, and there we go. The system check identified no issues. So we are good to go and continue. Right. Now we want to create our first component. So let's go and say next page. And now we're going to continue and set that up accordingly so we can get this in place. All right, so let's get started. So components are core concepts that exist within React Pi. And it's basically a foundation that you use when you are building your user interfaces in terms of the UI. Now, of course, in React, of course, as it is, we would utilize components. We would also have the same sort of logic in other front end frameworks as well with components and handling. So it's the same sort of principle that's going to apply in this case. All right. So what we can do is we can either select a Django app, which we already have, or we can go in ahead and create one. Okay. So to make it easier for you, I'd recommend that you follow along with me and create one as I do, just to make it easier for you. Right, so I'm going to create a new uh, Django app. So I'll say Python manage.py start app, and I'm going to call it my underscore app. So let me make this a bit bigger, just like that. Okay. Then we can go to our settings.py file. And you can just put this anywhere. I'm going to put it down here and call it my underscore app. And that's what it's called. So make sure you register your app in your list of installed apps. Great. And we can see the app was created. Now, once we've got this set up, we can then define a component. So we'll start off by creating a components.py file. And this is going to have a list of all of the components that will be relevant for a particular Django app. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So in my underscore app, I can right click on it, say new file, and I'm going to call this components.py. 
Okay, and remember, like I said, each app will have its own components.py file. Then we can reference this sample code here. And I'm just going to adjust it so it's not too complicated. I'm going to remove everything here in terms of the uh, arguments. And I'm going to also remove this. We can remove this F string. And I'm just going to keep it at hello world. Very simple. And this component here, as we can see, is coming from the React Pi module. And we are importing the component decorator along with HTML. Okay, so here we would wrap a basic function with a component decorator to signify this is a component, and it's going to return HTML text, as we can see here, as a H1 markup. So that is the basic way in which we can set up a component with React Pi. Now that we have our component defined, we need to now reference it in our Django markup. So let's go to the next step, and that is to embed a template. So what we can do now is create a template. So what we can do is within our app here, we can create templates at the app level. So to do so, you would need to right click on your app, give and create a new folder, and you need to call it templates, okay? Then in your templates directory, you can right click, say new file, and I'm going to call it index, Dot HTML. Very simple. Then we can copy the following logic, paste it in. And what I'm going to do here is at the end with the recipient, let's take that out because we aren't setting up any special arguments. And then you just want to remove this example uh, dot project. You just need to refer to the name of your app. That's all that you need to do. So you don't need to refer to the project that you're using and then the app just the app itself, since the component is actually within your app, as you can see. All right, so keep that in mind here. Now let's zoom in now. So we are loading the React Pi template tags here, and then we're loading our component, which is from my underscore app dot components, which is this components.py file, and then it's referring to that function, hello world. So if we look at this from this perspective, let's take a look. So we are loading a component, okay, which is in the my app directory. So we open that up and it is in the components file, which is called components.py. And we are referring to the hello world um, function, which has of course been deco decorated by a component from React Pi. As we can see, it's called dot hello world. And that is how you can refer to components within your templates in Django. All right, now we're not there yet, but that's the basic idea of what we need to do. We need to go on ahead and set up now a Django view. So very simple. So this should be Django 101. So in our views.py file within our app here, we wanna open that up. Okay, and we can create a simple view. So here I'm just going to utilize this sample and I'm just gonna change the name because we called it index.html and that correlates to the file name here. And then you want to create a native urls.py file that pertains to my app. So you can right click on my app, say new file, and you can call this urls.py. Okay, and this is going to be within my app here. Okay, and then we can just go ahead and add the following markup. And we can just remove this and say dot. So from all views, we want to ensure that we are handling this view here called index, which we are importing. We're using the pass function here so that we can create a URL. And the route name here is just going to be example. And we're saying views.index so that we can grab that index view and then return that request called index.html. And in index.html, it's going to pass through that component that we defined earlier here, as you can see. All right. So that is how we can integrate it all. But we're not there just yet. Before you can view your component, you need to ensure that you register your app level urls.py file here within your main urls.py file where you have your Django admin 
and where we defined React Pi. So we can close everything here except URLs.py. And you now want to open up Elevate and or your project and look for your URLs.py file. And you'll see now we have this URLs.py file in my app. And then we have our main project URLs.py file. All we need to do is register all the URLs within our app. So to do so, you can say pass. We can leave this blank and then comma include. And we're going to include all of the URLs within my app. So we'll say my underscore app dot URLs. And that's going to refer to all the URLs we define in the URLs.py file within my underscore app. Okay, just make sure at the end you add in a comma. Right, so there you have it. Now we can close all of this up and we can actually test everything. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm going to open up my command prompt. I'm going to say pycent manage.py run a server. And you'll notice that this message won't come up again. It will just say debug react pies in debug mode. Okay. And there we go. We can see it just shows the regular uh, message here in place. Okay. And now we can access our server. And we can go to that URL, which was forward slash example. And there we go. Hello world is in place. And now you're officially using a component that you defined in your app. So if we go to components.py and we go to that template, we can now see that we are using that component that we defined. Now, what you can do is now is you can go on ahead and define multiple components for your application and just go on ahead and configure it here accordingly. So for example, you can create components for a main header, for a navigation menu. If you want to define links or lists or anything of the sort, you can go ahead and define them as individual components here that you can just go ahead and refer to in your index.html file. Okay, just re remember that the dot after the component is the name of your component here. So you could have, for example, dot header, dot navigation bar, dot footer, etc. And you can go ahead and define it accordingly here. Now there is some room here to customize and modify, but this just gives you a bit of a basic introduction here into how you can utilize React Pi to get everything organized with what you are essentially looking for. All right. Now, in the event that you don't see this at first, you might need to clear your cache. So if you go to the three dots in Google Chrome and scroll down to more tools, you will see this developer tools here. And then you can just right click on the refresh icon, empty the cache and hard reload, and then right click again and say hard reload again. And then in any event that it's not showing up, you should then see it afterwards in that regard. All right, guys, so that is essentially it for this video tutorial. That's how you can go on a hedge and integrate React, React Pi within your Django applications. And that's gonna allow you to utilize components and the like that can really help to streamline your applications and make it more efficient. But anyway, guys, that's it for this video tutorial. And as always, thank you for the support and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.